obviously the national side again. Are you a bit pessimistic going into this World Cup? Obviously Steve Warthrick, who you know quite well, was it the right time to make a change from Eddie Jones to bring in Steve? And What do you think is a good World Cup for England? Uh, I, I do think it was right for um, someone else to come in and for Steve to come in. I think he's been um, he's been fast track quite right. He's you know a, a very good England uh, prospect and now an England coach. Um, there were you know things weren't happening for England um, and some changes needed to happen. I maybe I possibly wouldn't have. Uh, let Eddie go to another country for this World Cup but that's more of a contractual issue um, I, yeah, World Cups are, are very unique they teams will go in as as you know the top four sides in, in the world favourites etc um, but there are always upsets along the way I, I'm not going to sit here stand here and say England are going to win the World Cup I think they've got a chance of winning the World Cup. I think by the draw that they have, you know, they 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 should should get to a semi-final. Now, I think as we all know, getting to a semi-final, you know, the, the, all bets are off. You, know, you become superhuman. The teams have played five or six games. There are injuries. There are form. You know, all these things come into play. Um, but England are not going to be the favourites. You know, Ireland, France, New Zealand, for me, are probably the two that maybe put South Africa in there as well. Likely to be two of those teams in the final, I think so. But you know, potentially uh, Australia, England, Scotland could get into you know, further qualifications with a bounce of a ball, a yellow card or whatever can happen. We know what this game can, can produce uh, and... I've got to say, fingers crossed it happens for England, but uh, I think it will be a tough uh, tournament for them. I don't want to keep you too long, I just want to have one question on Ireland as well. Look, Andy Farrell's come in, he's done a fantastic job, he's almost the Jack Charlton of Irish rugby now. Um, and also people have been saying, you know, they're playing great rugby, very watchable rugby and winning, and they also seem like a really happy team as well. Well, I, I think you, you, you mentioned a, a very good point there, that you know, they are, they're playing very watchable rugby. Ordinarily, the coaches and the players probably couldn't give a damn whether it was watchable or not. If it's winning, then great. However, I think what you're seeing with Ireland, it's watchable because the players are loving what they're doing day to day. They're loving their environment. I don't, I don't know any of the... You know, I know Johnny texts them a little bit probably because he's the oldest player and we you know but you you can just feel it within their interviews the way that they play the way how they warm up how they you know relax their downtime the social media videos that you see of them hanging out with one another there is a very unique environment that uh, Andy and his team have, have set up there um, and as much as people are going to argue that there's a few months ago and etc till the world cup a lot can change to break that bond over the next few months it is virtually impossible. They've got something incredibly special that they've been building to over the last 18 months, two years, and they are peaking perfectly. Um, you know, they're going to come across France, they're going to come across New Zealand, they're going to come across you know, great teams if they want a chance to win it, but my goodness me, they're very capable.